Daily Detroit is brought to you in part by Castelia Cocktails. Don't just drink cocktails, experience them. With matching scents and knowledgeable bartenders to guide you, it's a great experience. Try one of their pairings or feel free to go off the menu with an adventure for your senses. The menu both tells you how boozy a drink is and there is a full non-alcoholic lineup taking care to give you a top-notch sensory experience no matter how you'd like to drink. Whether it's the intimate indoor bar with less than 20 seats or on the patio outside enjoying the best Detroit has to offer, Castalia is a great spot for a night out, a drink after dinner, or a date. They're open to all Wednesdays through Saturdays from 5 to 11 p.m. with the possibility for unique experiences for small groups anytime with a reservation. You can learn more at CasteliaCocktails.com. That's CasteliaCocktails.com. Make sure to support the businesses that support us and stop on by. Hello, everyone, and welcome to your daily Detroit sharing what to know and where to go in Southeast Michigan. It is Friday, August 11th, 2023, coming to you from Detroit's beautiful North End. As you may know, I'm Jer Stays, and this Friday is a little shook up, if you will. Devin, you heard him on Wednesday. You know, it's August vacations, all the other stuff. So we brought a few other friends out. First off, producer extraordinaire Cheyenne Osorini. How are you? I am great. How are you? Excellent, excellent. And then to my right, None other than the excellent, effervescent engineer, Randy. I am always happy to be on this side of the microphone. It is always good to see you on there, too. It's, it doesn't happen enough. We've got a ton of stuff to talk about today. And I think for the most part, since it's Friday and we've got a lot of food to talk about, it's going to be a pretty uh, happy show, right, guys? I think so, yeah. I think everything is food news. <laughs> pretty much, right? Well, you know what? Let's just be honest. It's what everybody clicks on. Download, download. It's just, one of my favorite subjects. Mm -hmm. Mine too. All of us. So let's get started. We actually went to the media preview of Brine Oyster Bar in Gross Point Park. Now, this is in the old Janice Lunch space, uh, just inside of the Gross Point border near the Detroit border in the Park Village area. Anyway, I just want to say the first impression I had was, and of course, your mileage may vary. This is an early look. This is not a full review. But man, what an amazing job with the space they did. You know, I grew up in this area down the street, and I have very fond memories of Janet's lunch, mainly because, you know, my dad and my uncle would bring me there. But let me tell you, this space is beautiful, and it really made me realize what a hole <laughs> Janet's lunch was. I loved that I place. I loved Janet's and lunch. I, I still remember the apple pie, but it was like we were talking to uh, friends of the show while we were there. Like, uh, I was like 10 years old. And I have no idea if that was good apple pie or not. I just remember apple pie and dad. Yeah. And and that's it. But yeah, there were some issues with that building. There was a lot of issues with that building. And I was real nervous because you always, you know, being from Detroit, you're always worried that the next thing that's going to happen is the, a well-landscaped, lit, parking fenced lot. parking lot. <laughs> right? And you know what? I got to hand it to them. Although there were some, there's been some shifts around whatever, they did a really good job with this building. They did. It was so nice. It was... Fancy, but approachable. Kind of like your grandma's living room fancy. Like, not the parlor where you couldn't go as a kid, but like the with living the, room. With the plastic over the, yeah. <laughs> over the seats. Yeah. So it was, no. it was comfortable, but a little bit upscale. Yeah. You know, here's the thing. This is just on the first look and approach. This place has such strong vibes to it. It reminds me of like, if you're going to do like a nice date night downtown. Mm -hmm. It's a real elevation of that scene because for years, the east side eh, with the food a little bit, but yeah. things have really changed a lot. Let's dive into what's there. Now, full disclosure, listeners, there's a bunch of stuff I couldn't try because I would die. So I leave it to the both of you to kind of walk us through the food. I will say that I very much enjoyed the fish and chips sampler that I had. And we'll, we'll get into the space and things like that a little bit more in the details. But when we talk about the food, I'm going to leave it to the two of you. So the main thing about brine is that it's an oyster house. So they have a raw bar in the front. Yeah, as soon as you walk in, you see the oyster shucking station, yeah. all the ice with the oysters sitting there for you to see right inside the front door and past the host stand. I'm not an oyster person, but did you try some? I love oysters. We know. He's a member of the oyster cult, I think. We <laughs> we were at Hazel's. Yeah. We know. <laughs> we watched him devour half the restaurant stuff. Yeah. Oysters, great. And it was just a great start to the meal. Everything else there was great, too. But, you know, you have to be top notch if you're going to name the restaurant after the item. Yeah. Right. And that's why I go to you, because I could be like, it was a great 
curry carrot salad, but like <laughs> that's I mean, not what you go there. It but was, it's not it's not carrot. The carrot. House in <laughs> Gross Point Park. House. Well, there is the Sprout House for that down the street. Right. I'm glad we all liked it. We actually had a, a little sample of one of the drinks, which was good. Yeah. And here's the thing. Like, our the way that we tried this was lots of little samplers. We mm-hmm. didn't have, like, full plates. We had right. things like uh, these. Uh, the Parker inter- House Rolls. The Parker House Rolls. The Interesting Mushrooms. Yes. Uh, the Rolls were great. Three different kinds of butter, actually. Yeah. They had. Traditional salted butter, they had a garlic herb butter, and then they had a butter that had roe in it. I avoided that one. You can eat fish eggs. No, I can, but do I want to? It was good. Okay. Nice little pops of salty brininess in, in the butter. Okay, okay. That's not my jam, but the other butters were great. Some of the uh, interior details I really loved. I loved how there were hand-painted, like, brine oyster bar, Gross Point, Michigan, on, like, the the old lamp styles. The globe lamps, The yes. globe lamps yeah, were each, amazing. Each globe had a different word on it, so you yeah. read it as it went down the bar. Yeah, it was really cool. Was the bar was beautiful. Uh, the seating was beautiful. The staircase going up. So there's actually two levels to this thing. Mm-hmm. Oh, the staircase was gorgeous. Dark wood. Nice and wide staircase. The sign at the base of the staircase saying brine. That was... Lots of Instagram-worthy moments here. And with this episode, I'm going to post a bunch of pictures from our trip. I've been kind of holding on to those uh, until this. Upstairs, a whole nother, like, set and scene where you've Mm -hmm. got, you know, wine and everything else and seating areas. And another bar. And another bar. And it's clear that uh, sometimes they put bands out there on the deck. But you can also go out onto the deck, which had a really quaint view of the park. Mm -hmm. And you could see around there. I mean, there's so many things happening. And- you can see what's happening from there. So, like across the street, they're actually bringing back the old brick facing of Point Hardware. So, you can see that restoration happening. It's just cool to go to a place that there's so many interesting little details that you can can look at. And it's like a very vibrant neighborhood in that area. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I mean, as I said, outside of the stuff I couldn't eat, I was really impressed with the entire thing. And I will go back to enjoy the food that isn't shellfish. I'm kind of speechless by it. I haven't been this excited about an interior and kind of a a program in a while. Yeah, I agree. I'm looking forward to going back and trying some of the things that weren't offered during our little taste tests. And for people who might not be seafood lovers, they do have a burger and steak frites on the menu. So there is something for land lovers. (laughs) Now, the... Pricing on the menus and such. How did you all feel about it? The prices are a little on the higher side. You're not going to go here daily or even weekly probably, but once every few months for sure, maybe even more frequently if you're- Like if it's like your spot, you if that's your jam. Your spot or, you know, you're dating and, you know, have a new person to take each time. <laughs> now, I'm going to introduce a concept here, and this is something I haven't talked to you all about, but I'm putting together a list- And I'm going to make this a thing. Daily Detroit's drive-worthy destinations, meaning anywhere in the region, is it worth driving to? Is it worth a trip to go out and enjoy it? So is this a drive-worthy destination to you? Would you you drive out to see it? I would totally drive from West Village to Gross Point Park to visit (laughs) Brian. You're like right around the corner. I am super close. (laughs) You're so close. I mean, I'm in Gross Point quite a bit. So, yeah. But would you go? Would you take the husband? (sighs) Probably not because my husband is not a seafood fan, but I would take my best friend. Okay. So it's drive worthy. Yeah. I would pick up my uncle and take him maybe because he really likes seafood. And he's really excited about seeing this place because he used to go to Janet's lunch. That's very cool. That's very cool. All right. So thumbs up on Brian, huh? Thumbs up indeed. Yes. Thumbs up. Now, we also visited a couple other places. We ran into some friends of the show, Joe and Megan from Ackroyd's Bakery, which is a lot of fun. (laughs) We rolled into trivia. At Atwater Brewery and Randy, Engineer Randy, we just dominated. Like, and it was your fault that we dominated. We walk in there late <laughs> and then walk away winning by multiple points. And then everyone just kind of looking at us like, who are these guys? Yeah. We, and then you branded our team. <laughs> we were going to have dinner, but they didn't have spot for us. So we went to Atwater first. And as we walked in, they were starting trivia. Like she was ready to read the first question. So I was frantically trying to get good internet connection so I could register us. And she started like, okay, here. and question one was, and the answer is, and I pushed submit right before she said the answer on question one. Like we were that late to trivia that I didn't even know was happening. <laughs> well, good work, everyone, for the Daily Detroit Ackroyd's Bakery team. Yeah, we won. <laughs> we did. Uh, and we'll have to come back sometime. We do because we 
Want a gift card? (laughs) (laughs) That's how they get us. This is not sponsored by... We'll take their money, but this is not sponsored by them. Across the street, Bricks. Now, we haven't visited, at least I haven't visited, since it opened. Second bite at the apple, if you will, has Bricks held up. Yeah, it was just as good as I remember. I don't recall also being there or ever being there since we went there for the media preview. I tried to go with my best friend, and they were packed, and so we ended up going to Howlers and Growlers down the street. It held up. 100%. And... Across a variety of dishes, we tried some pizza, but what else did we do? Because you you and Joe, you know, Joe Foodie, go go follow him. Wow. You two just, like, dived in. Yeah, Joe Foodie just said, hey, can I order for the table? And that was so much easier than trying to decide. So yeah. um, he ordered a couple of pizzas for us, a couple of starters for us, a pasta dish. I added a second pasta dish. All the food was fantastic. What was the standout for you? I would probably say the pasta dish that had the sausage and I believe it was gamelli pasta. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I, I really enjoyed that as well. I will also add that A, the looks inside are great. It's definitely still kept together. I really enjoyed the uh, game section, the arcade game section in the back. Some retro arcade games as well. Yeah. Just a little something for the kids or the kids at heart. And it's on free play, guys. Yeah. Yeah. So you don't have to bring your quarters. So that's awesome. Very, very awesome. And key if you're going to be bringing the kid or whatever. Yeah. Which I think is part of like that crowd. You know what I mean? Like sometimes you're going to have kids in there at times and stuff like that. So yeah. Thumbs up across the board again. Absolutely. Yep. Great the first time. Great this time. I love to see a place hold it together. Oh, I just want to say Chef Trenton. I walked into Brian and he looked at me and he said, I remember you from Bricks when you told me that your dad used to come in here and pick up his printing orders. And I said, yeah, how are you? (laughs) So he has a really good memory (laughs) because it was a couple years ago. Yeah, he remembered me too, but I've run into him a few times at Marshall's. So Jer, on your road trip to Ohio. I swear, you end up in Columbus one day, you're, you're, you're going oh, sure to enjoy it. Yeah, I'm sure it can be enjoyable. I'm not saying it can't be. Anyway, I know that you and I have been talking about this gas station because they are coming here. And people are obsessed with it. I posted about it on Instagram. All the comments. I'm going to have to pull up some of these comments yeah. we talk about. We listened to a podcast about it, Jer, a couple months ago. Yeah, somebody literally made a podcast about sheets. Yes. So how was your experience? I didn't know what I was in for. Okay. (laughs) So like I I understand now greatly the concept of the, I don't even want to call it a stunt gas station, but yeah, it's like a super gas station where it's food and groceries and yeah, everything, all the things. Yeah. All the things. So like Bucky's, right? Like Bucky's is the quintessential example of this, which by the way, I just learned they're moving up from down South. They're going to be opening up in Dayton, Ohio soon. So you don't have to go south, south, just south. I feel like Bucky's is going to be everywhere. Anyway, let's get back to Sheets. Finally opening up in Metro Detroit over in Romulus. What I realized about this place is that the food is, it's like actually good fast food. Okay. So the the trick about Sheets is not only the gas prices and all the other stuff, and there's like eight slushy machines. Well, not slushy is the brand, but whatever yeah, yeah, whatever yeah. they like are. I see. Whatever. Yeah. That's very entertaining. You order everything At kiosks. Okay. And then you bring your little receipt over and then you like auto pay it. Hmm. So that was interesting. The affection for sheets is huge with people and there's like hundreds of them and they have plans to put a ton of them in Michigan. So that's why I just had to stop. Now, key to this is that they drop all of your food when you order it. So nothing goes under like the heat lamp window. So I tried an appetizer spread, which was the mac and cheese bites the mozzarella sticks and like these chicken nugget tenders. Hmm. They kind of put them in the nugget category, but they're definitely like tender-ish. Yeah. Along with their boom boom sauce, a Dr. Pepper barbecue, and like a spicy ketchup. This is the best damn mac and cheese wedges I've ever had. Really? They're really good. They're really good. And the chicken was really on point. And I was like, oh, okay. Now I get it. Because you can get the gas. You go through there. You get your food. It's like a little oasis in the middle of wherever you're going. Now, it's not the size of like a Love's which is very common if you do drive drives right. and all that kind of stuff. But honestly, I was thumbs up with the Sheets experience and I, I posted about it and do people want to hear what the people said? Yeah. And so the people said, uh, Jay the One, yes, I used to live in Virginia. Dope concept, should do well here. Danielle Shields, ah, I have a friend in Pitt, so I signed up for awards just because, happy to use it again. Friend of the show, David. And we all know which David this is. I can't wait until they open a second location so I can start making jokes between the Sheets. <laughs> 
Shelby, yes, I don't understand why upgraded gas stations haven't made it to the Midwest before now. And then another one, former Pennsylvania resident, now Detroiter, love Sheets, can't wait for him. Uh, Sheets has the best chain gas station food, in my opinion, from AB Car. Lots of options and insane curly fries. Kelsey, oh my God, I went for the first time today on my drive back to Philly. Uh, it sucked. Wawa all the way. Then a bunch of people were like, Team Wawa. Are you familiar with Wawa? Yeah, I saw it's, your face. It's, a, it's a competitor to Sheets. Okay, what is your overall opinion of Wawa? Because I've never I been don't to think Wawa. I've stopped at either one. Okay. I have not stopped at Wawa either. I just know there's a big rivalry between Sheets fans and Wawa yeah. fans. And it is evident here. I have another like four people who are like Team Wawa go to Hell Sheets. <laughs> Uh, and then other people are like team sheets all the way, clean bathrooms and good food, which is, of course, like when you're the bathroom's super important in this kind of stuff. Yeah. Like when we did a road trip to Memphis, yeah. it was all about where I had a clean bathroom. Yeah. And we, after a while, we prioritize stopping at Love's, which is similar vein. And uh, finally, the one I want to share from Beer Mead Cider Chow. It's pretty nice until Bucky says, hold my beer. We do have a while to wait, though, right? This isn't coming for until 2025. I think it's a little sooner than that, but it's definitely on the way. Sometimes in different ways, I just get random pictures from Randy and they're always food and drinks. And uh, this one looked pretty good from the pictures. Where were you venturing, Mr. Randy? I met a friend at Barrel House in Ferndale. Is this the successor to the Cornerstone Barrel House that used to be in downtown Detroit? It is. In fact, the silverware was still wrapped with Cornerstone Barrel House <laughs> wrappers. <laughs> Waste not, want not. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But it is in the former Dino spot on Woodward, south of Nine Mile in Ferndale. Oh, I'm glad to finally see something go in there. It's been kind of quiet for a while. Absolutely. Absolutely. And everything about the experience was great from the friendliness of the staff. The drinks were great. And then the food was also top notch. I had a Coney egg roll. Ooh. <laughs> and <laughs> it sounds... I mean, but the egg roll is part of like the lore of Metro Detroit. Right. Right. Like the, we egg roll everything. And apparently we also Coney everything. Yeah. Uh, but it was chopped up hot dogs, Coney sauce inside an egg roll that was fried perfectly crisp. It wasn't greasy. And then it was cut into pieces, served on a plate, drizzled with mustard. And then there was cheese sauce for dipping. That was my favorite thing we had. We also had the lobster Rangoon. And then the mac and cheese. Mac and cheese was just as good as the old Detroit location. Really? Yeah. That's good to hear. That's good to hear. Excellent. Is it a overall positive addition then to the downtown Ferndale scene? Oh, yeah. I think this is a good addition to Ferndale. Casual, approachable place. Good alternative to some of the classics or the stayed standbys that you might have gotten tired of. And value for money? Because people always want to know about that. Yeah, a uh, good weekend night out. Okay. I know I showed my husband the picture of the Coney egg rolls, and he was like, what are those? And I said, they're what you think they are. And he was like, where is this? <laughs> and I, <laughs> I said, it's like over in the old Dino space. He's like, okay, all right. And I was like, well, and your go. husband is a man of few words. He is. I think you're going to go there with him, right? I think we are. Yeah. I think we're going to go check it out. And it'll be nice because one of our first couple dates was actually at Dino's. So it'll be nice to go back into the space and see what they did with it. All right, let's get into some quick fire news. Uh, we were just talking about Ferndale. Treat Dreams, new locations in Madison Heights and Gross Point Woods soon. And uh, in Ferndale, they'll be hosting their hero or villain sandwich food truck. And how do you say that? I think it's Melee Coffee. Melee Coffee? I'm always for new coffee. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And apparently the Madison Heights location has been open for a little while. They took over Dairy Freeze. Freeze with three <laughs> Zs on the end. Oh my gosh, all the Zs. So many Zs. Uh, that's been open for a couple of months now. And then the Gross Point Woods location is still coming soon. What are your flavors over there? I think for me, it's always, what is it, the, the Cookie Monster? Yeah, the blue Cookie Monster with crushed up Oreos in it. Yeah, that's really good. Mine is the Salted Caramel or the Snozberry. Oh, Snozberry. Swedish Fish is where it's at. Yes. That's the other one. That is my yeah. favorite one. Anytime Swedish Fish is on the menu. Like Cookie yep. Monster is always on the menu. Yeah. Swedish Fish rotates through. Anytime Swedish Fish is on the menu, I get the Swedish Fish because it actually, it tastes like, and the texture feels like, that actually melts Swedish Fish candies mm -hmm. and makes it into the ice cream base because it's got that slightly stretchy, gummy texture. Yeah. It, oh, it's, it's really so good. good. Yeah. And the good news about the Cookie Monster is that it might be confusingly blue, but it's not blueberries for you, Randy. <laughs> Because longtime listeners will know the last time the three of us were together in this particular studio, we learned how much Randy Walker hates blueberries. Yes. <laughs> Some other news, Plaza de Pizza in Royal Oak on 11 Mile. They finally moved into their new, bigger space. 
but you don't have to go far. In fact, you can park in the same parking lot because <laughs> they moved from the front of the parking lot to the larger space in the back of the parking lot. Oh, okay. Okay. Listeners might know that space as the former podcast Detroit Studios. Oh, yeah. Their headquarters were there. Yeah, we've done a lot of things. Yeah, we, we did a lot of things in did. that spot, and now it's a pizza place. Is it still just takeout only, or is there actually a small dining room in there now? That's a good question. I haven't been in there yet. They just opened they, this they, week. They do yeah. have done some major renovations. Major, major. Because it was like I mean, there was a suite of little offices. Super small, too. So Yeah, it was offices, and then it was recording studios, Yeah, and there was a kitchenette, but- Like you know, not an actual kitchen. Yeah, there's kitchen. no full kitchen. No, and no way to- Yeah, they must have done a lot of work. And that's such a residentially dense area, and mm-hmm. so many people- I know so many listeners live right there, so thanks for uh, finding that one out. And what do you think of their pizza? Oh, I love their pizza. I love their Tell me about sandwiches. It. Uh, it's Detroit style pizza, which I'm not a huge fan of, but I would have to say that this is one of the Detroit style pizzas I do like. And then their sandwiches. When I was working at the studio there, I would go up front and always grab a sandwich from them. That's awesome. Super good. One close to uh, my heart, O'Flaherty's, is uh, reopening over there on Charlevoix and Gross Point Park because everything goes back to the east side it today. It does. But they, there was a fire next door, a pretty gnarly one, mm-hmm. and uh, they had to do a lot of work on it. Yeah, they did uh, like a closing shut down temporarily party to kind of say, hey, we're going to be done for a while so we can do some renovations because of this fire. Uh, and then finally, everything is good to go. And so they are opening up. Actually, eight eleven is today when you're listening to this episode. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, and finally, a little bit of uh, TV news. Yeah. So we reported that Chef Omar from Saffron de Toile won his round on Chopped. Unfortunately, round two, where he competed against chefs from the other three national regions, he was eliminated in the entree round. Oh. You know, Saffron Detroit has done like so much stuff in their short time that they've been out there. And uh, I, I'm just glad to see so many Detroit places get some pop. I mean, there was Kana recently. Now, mm-hmm. some people love Kana. Some people hate him. I'm all for like, I want everybody from Detroit to I win. hope the Kana drama on Great Kana Food Truck. Drama. <laughs> uh, the Kana drama. Kana on- mama drama. <laughs> Kind of, kind of llama drama. I hope is there a llama? Can somebody get get a llama? I I hope that drama that Kana had on Great Food Truck Race. I hope that was a production fabrication and not. It, it has to be. This show has been so ridiculous the last several seasons that you've kind of fallen out of love with Food Truck Race, haven't you? It's just. Not about the food or the food truck or even a race at this out, they point. They took out the shopping. Yeah, there's no shopping. There's no actual race anymore. It's definitely more about the drama than the food or the cooking. Interesting. I mean, I enjoyed it. I, I'm kind of a junkie for that stuff. And I mean, you know, maybe I'm just uh, – I think she did what she had to do. I mean, but actually, I would love to talk to her on the show. I would love to see what her experience was. Also, you know, Chef Omar would be great to get into because uh, it's just interesting to see that view. And we've had some chefs as of late – Get some great attention. And as I said, I want everybody from Detroit to win. His North round, he was competing against Chef Jill Vetter from Salt, whose food I've had at a pop-up at Frame in Hazel Park. Mm. So I was like torn because I haven't actually had Chef Omar's food yet. I haven't been to Saffron de Toile yet. So I was like, eh, do I cheer for the hometown chef or do I cheer for the chef whose food I've actually had? And I was happy that they, got, that they were competing, but I was glad that Chef Omar did win. I feel like we need to do an outing. <laughs> that sounds like fun. Uh, I will also give a heads up that uh, we are going to be putting together some sort of happy hour and party. Uh, I mentioned this on Wednesday, but I want to mention it to personally thank the both of you for we're in the finalists for top news and politics podcast in the country from the podcast awards. Thanks to both of you. Thanks, of course, to our listeners. And I, I've said that before, but every time I see somebody new in the studio that I haven't seen since we got it, I, I really appreciate both of yours efforts with this. And uh, I think Devin's right. We need to throw some sort of thing. We got to figure out where it is and all that stuff. But uh, thanks to both of you. It is great to be against and get nominated against all those other national names. We really have to thank our listeners for voting for us, nominating us for this. Yeah. I know when we put our name in, we were like, well, will the little guy kind of get over the hump and get in there? And we were very excited when Jer texted me a picture and was like, does this mean we're finalists? <laughs> I, I, I couldn't believe it for three hours. Like I didn't want to say anything to anybody. <laughs> because we hadn't gotten the email yet that we had made it, but we saw it on the website because they had just uploaded it. And then I went and looked and I was like, I think it does. I think we made it. 
And I remember we tried before. It wasn't last year, was it? It was a couple years ago. It was a couple years ago. ago. We failed. But we've got (laughs) – yeah, we we didn't get nominated last year. We we did not make the finalists. We were not a finalist the last time. It is great to be a finalist this time, and hopefully we can pull off a win. But if not, still super proud of what we did. For sure. And thank you, listeners, again. All right. With that, we are done for today. Cheyenne Osirini, thank you so much. It was a pleasure as always. Randy Walker, always a gentleman and scholar. I am great. (laughs) (laughs) Randy is great. You know what? I'm going to leave it there. Engineer Randy is great. We're always glad to see you. As always, if you've got feedback, 313-789-3211, dailydetroit at gmail.com. If you'd like to support what we're doing, buymeacoffee.com slash dailydetroit or... Email me, dailydetroit at gmail.com. We're always open to talking about sponsorships and ways to grow the show. With that, I am Jer Stays. Remember that you are somebody, and we'll see you around Detroit.